Hey, what's up? It's Ben from Wad Prep, and in this video, we're gonna talk about how to jump rope for CrossFit beginners. So if you're someone who's getting into functional fitness or CrossFit, and you're trying to learn double unders eventually, this is a perfect video to help you build the right foundations and learn how to do single unders properly so that you can eventually move on to something as fancy and as awesome as double unders. So if you can't do double unders or maybe you've never even jumped rope before and you're trying to learn, this is gonna be a great video to show you the mechanics. We're gonna talk about jump, we're gonna talk about spin, and we're gonna talk about coordination. So if you're interested in any of those three things to help you learn double unders eventually, then this is the video for you. Stick around to the end of the video, and I actually have a lot of free training that I want to give you. We have a couple really good free training guides, and if you stick around to the end, I will give you the details on how to get those. So let's dig right into it. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is the jump. It is very easy to jump incorrectly for jumping rope. Whether we're trying to eventually learn double unders, or if you just wanna get really good at single unders, there's a few things that we need to learn. There's three points on the jump. The first point, is making sure that you're rebounding or not pausing. Oftentimes I will see people tend to do this half second pause in between jumps. When they're first picking up a jump rope, they'll do single unders, but they'll also do single unders with a bit of a pause. That's what we need to eliminate completely altogether. So we need to eliminate the pause. The next thing, point number two when it comes to the jump, once we eliminate the pause, we also need to remember to keep our toes down. So it's really important that when we jump, we don't get in the habit of lifting our toes into the air. It's kind of like this weird habit that people pick up really, really early on when they're learning how to do single unders and double unders. So the thing that I always teach athletes is to keep your post toes pointed down or keep your calves flexed. That's really gonna help you with point number one, which is working on rebounding without pausing. And then the third thing that I wanna talk about is bending in all the right places. So when we're jumping properly like a spring, you're going to notice that I'm bending at my heels, I'm bending at my knees and at my hips, all while keeping my torso relatively vertical. So I've talked about the mechanics. I've showed you some videos of me doing it right. What is my favorite drill to work on this? It's something really simple. It's called a line jump. So all we're gonna do is, is find a crack on the floor or some sort of line, or you can even lay down a jump rope. Or if you want, you can do this over something like a barbell or a dumbbell and practice rebounding from side to side or forward and backwards, practicing all of these mechanics. And when you do this, practicing with these line jumps or bar hops, if you would like to add a little bit more height to the equation, this is the perfect building block to move on to the next progression. Once we learn how to jump, now it's time to learn how to spin. This is a common issue with a lot of people because you can get away with spinning improperly, but unfortunately it's gonna set you up for fatigue and disaster in the future. So when it comes to spinning the jump rope and learning how to spin, the main concepts that I want you to understand are number one, your wrist and forearm should spin the rope, not your entire arm. So what I want you to practice is practice spinning with your wrist and forearm. So maybe your forearm can move up and down a little bit. The way that I like to practice this is simply by taking a band, wrapping it around just above my elbows, wrapping around my body, and then forcing myself to practice jumping rope like that. What that does is that kind of eliminates the ability for us to use our shoulders and use our entire straight arm to spin the rope. Instead, it forces us to really focus on the wrist flick and maybe a little bit of forearm action to spin and manipulate the rope. So once we have that understanding, another thing I want you to add to the equation is making sure that your thumbs are always pointing out. So when we grab the jump rope, another common issue that I see is people throwing the rope forward and backwards. They kind of like throw it forward, throw it back. So rather than flicking their wrist up and down in order to initiate the spin, they throw it forward, they pull it back, they throw it forward, they pull it back. And what happens is that that might work for single unders, but as soon as we introduce double unders, it really, really messes up the rope. The rope is spinning so fast, it causes it to twist and do all sorts of crazy things. So focus on wrist flicks. You can use that band technique. And then the next thing is always keep your thumbs pointed out. If you ever see that your thumbs are pointed forward or your thumbs start pointing back, you are probably making some sort of spinning air. So just keep your thumbs pointed out to the side and that is really gonna help you fix any of those issues. And then the last thing that I want to mention for spin is that a lot of times using a heavier rope will help you get the feedback that you need to spin the rope correctly. 
So a common misconception, and I talk about this in a lot of other videos, I'll make sure that in the description and the top comments, we will link a few of our other, uh, which jump rope should you use videos and how to set up your jump rope properly. A lot of people will go with a super duper fast speed rope because they think speed is everything. Well, unfortunately, those really fast speed ropes are oftentimes really, really lightweight. Or maybe you go on the opposite end of the spectrum and you just get the cheapest rope that money can buy. Some of those ropes are so flimsy and lightweight that you can't really feel them in your hands. When you can't feel them, you'll have a tendency to really move your arms in an exaggerated fashion to actually get the rope to spin. So what we always suggest is using a rope that's slightly heavier. So one of my favorite things to do is to use a rope that has a thicker, heavier cable. So uh, maybe you have a cable that's like this. It's more of a speed cable, so it's thinner, it's lighter. Well, with our actual jump rope set, which I'll make sure to link below, you can actually switch out cables and use a heavier cable. So this is great for people who are learning how to do their first single unders and even double unders, because that heavier cable allows you to learn how to flick your wrist and use your forearms properly. Another cool tool is to just learn how to spin the handles. So rather than holding the actual jump rope in your hand and spinning it as you normally would, you can actually practice your wrist flick by grabbing the rope and then spinning the handle. Okay, there's a, a jump rope company, our friends Jump and Rope made a tool that helps you learn how to do this. It's just a wiffle ball or maybe it's a pickleball. That's my favorite sport. So it kind of looks like a pickleball attached to a short cable attached to a rope handle. What you can do here is you can practice spinning. If you can learn how to spin properly by just using a little bit of the flick of the wrist or maybe a little bit of forearm action, then you will be set up for success and ready to move on to double unders eventually because you won't be flailing your arms around like crazy. So keep your thumbs out, use your wrists and forearms, and then if you need to, practice with a slightly heavier rope and then you will be spinning properly. The last piece of the puzzle, and this is honestly one of the hardest things to teach, is coordination. So if you're someone who can't clap to the beat, let's say you hear a song and you're just the person who just can't quite figure out the beat, double unders are gonna be hard for you because double unders are kind of like a dance. Single unders are kind of like a dance. So regardless of which one you're trying to learn, you need to understand and practice the coordination and the rhythm to get it and get the beat. So here are a couple drills that I suggest. The first way that I like to teach people coordination is something called the penguin clap. So we put the rope down and all you're doing is practicing the jumping that we learned earlier in this video. You're doing a rebounding jump and then you're clapping the side of your hips each time you want to spin the rope. So for single unders, it's gonna look like this. You jump and you clap your hips once. Notice that I'm clapping my hips while I'm off the ground because that's when we would spin our rope. Remember, every time we spin the rope, we need to be off the ground or else it's gonna hit our feet. So for the penguin claps, you can practice with singles or if you eventually want to move on to doubles, you can practice and it looks like this. So we're doing two claps while we're in the air. And then when we're on the ground, our hands are separated from our body. Penguin claps are a great way to teach you how to get the right coordination. You'll also notice that in order to do the double penguin clap, you're gonna to need to start to jump a little bit higher. And that's where another one of my favorite drills comes into play. If you wanna learn coordination, you need to change the speed of your single unders. So I wanna see you practice things like fast singles. So the, that's when you're doing single unders, using all the right mechanics that we talked about, but you're trying to move that rope as fast as possible. So that means short, quick, choppy jumps and a really, really fast wrist flick. And I also want you to practice the opposite side of that same coin, big singles. Big singles are a single under where you're purposefully jumping higher than you need to. This is a great drill, one of my favorite drills actually, to teach people how to do double unders eventually, along with penguin claps. So if you can learn how to do speed singles and big singles, you can change the speed and also the jump height and also the rhythm and the coordination of your single unders, then you will start to pick up the coordination that will then carry over to learning more advanced movements like the double under. And then the last thing that you can do if you wanna get fancy with it is something like this, which is the running single under, or you know, it's kinda of like the boxing drill where we're running in place, or you can do single leg jumps on each foot. The bottom line is the more variables you change, the more things that you add, the, the more things you can do to change your speed and cadence of the single unders, you're gonna be building that durability, that coordination, and that brain to wrist flick link that will make you be able to eventually move on to things like double unders. So I know that we covered a lot. We talked about jump, we talked about spin, and we talked about coordination. 
My hope is that you at least picked up two to three drills. What's great about jumping rope in single unders is that you can practice pretty much anywhere. So leave a comment below and let me know two drills that you really want to try from this video. Pull out two of the many that we talked about and leave a comment below and let me know what you are going to work on. And also let me know your goal. Are you trying to just learn how to do your first single unders? Are you trying to hit maybe 100 single unders and broken? Or are you someone who's eventually trying to move on to double unders? If that's the case, then we have lots of free training for you. Just click the link in the top comment below and there are, are gonna be links down there to our free double under training guide. We also have a course called Single Under Solution that comes as a special bonus to our double under course. I'll make sure that the team links up all the appropriate things below so that you can get the right rope and the right programming and the right coaching to make sure that we are making your jump rope dreams come true. I will see you in the next video. <laughs> That's really bad.